Okay, you've heard claims from psychics ranging from the ability to communicate with the deceased to seeing into the future, but do any of these assertions hold up to science? Let's find out now as we welcome the author of Becoming Psychic, Lessons from the Minds of Mediums, Healers, and Psychics, psychologist Dr. Jeff Tarrant. It's great to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks. It's great to be here. Tell me about what inspired you to study the brains of these individuals on a neuroscientific level. It's so fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually something that just sort of happened to me. Uh, I wasn't looking for this. Uh, I had been studying the brains of meditation and Qigong and some, you know, allied practices mm -hmm. maybe. And I was working at the University of Missouri at the time and a student introduced me to his mother who apparently was channeling the voices of uh, shamans okay. from South America. Wow. Yeah, it's a long story, yeah. more time than we have for, <laughs> and said, hey, do you want to measure her brain? And I was like, yes. Okay. And, you know, then she started introducing me to other mediums because she was also a, a psychic medium. And as they say, you know, the rest is history. It's just kind of continued from there. Your first case study just delivered to you right then and there in your classroom. It was huge. Okay, so tell me about <laughs> yeah. what you actually go through in terms of using EEG technology to go inside people's brains while this activity is happening. Right, so we use a 19 channel EEG to measure the brainwave activity, the electrical activity of the brain. And usually what we'll do is measure their brainwave activity at baseline, just mm -hmm. sitting there doing nothing. Maybe also having a conversation, just a regular conversation then also record their brainwave activity when they're doing a psychic reading or a mediumship reading so that we can compare and mm -hmm. say, well, what's the difference? Okay. Yeah. We have a little image here. Can you kind of walk me through what we're seeing? Sure. So the main brainwave categories are delta, theta, alpha, beta, high beta, and gamma. So it's the speed of the brainwaves. Mm. We have lots of different speeds of electricity in, in our brain. And what we're seeing here is the changes that occurred with a person that I recently examined. This was in another country. She's a a, a very well-known channeler in this okay. other country. And this is what her brain did when she was channeling. And so by channeling, me, we mean she was stepping her personality aside okay. so that this other energy just came through her. And so what those images are basically showing is that everything decreased. Huh. All of the brain waves dropped way down. Those blue colors are showing a dramatic decrease. So essentially she got her brain out of the way. Wow. <laughs> she kind of shut her brain off yeah. temporarily while this was happening. And so I thought that was very interesting because I've only seen that pattern show up a couple of times. Okay, and can you see a stark difference between someone going through an experience like that versus someone who doesn't claim to have any psychic ability? I mean, I imagine as you're looking at the images, it's quite clear in some instances. So it's, yeah, there's, there's a few different ways to kind of think about that, right? So if I look at people who don't claim to have any psychic abilities and those that do, and just look at their brains at baseline, mm -hmm there's no real significant differences. Right. The differences show up when they're doing their work. Mm -hmm. So kind of like that image we just saw, when they're actually doing a psychic reading or a mediumship reading, that's where we see dramatic changes that we don't see normally. Normally the brain doesn't change that much. Okay. It's pretty stable. Sure, I think we have another image to show that can kind of illustrate sure. further the point. Tell me about what we're seeing here. Yeah, so this is actually one person. This is uh, from Laura Lynn Jackson. She's a pretty well-known psychic medium and the first set of images are changes when she was doing a psychic reading, and the bottom row is when she was doing a mediumship reading. She, oh. makes, she makes a distinction between okay. the two. And you can actually see that the brain changed in different ways. Uh, so th th for her, those practices are not the same thing. Huh. They're different things, and the brain changed uh, in different ways. And is that pretty unique to her? Do most people kind of go one way or the other in terms of what they're capable of, of offering, I guess? Most of the psychic mediums I've studied actually kind of have a, 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 a similar process oh, okay. where they say, oh, now I'm doing a psychic reading, now I'm doing a mediumship. Wow. They don't all have such a distinct change sure. between the two in their brainwave patterns. That is unique to Laura. What about this concept of people being able to move things with their mind? That sounds pretty out there, but <laughs> is there any evidence that you've seen that's kind of compelling in that regard? Yeah, so that is an interesting one. So usually when we talk about kind of psychokinesis right. or mind over matter, the way it's studied scientifically is with something called micro psychokinesis. So it's studying very small things. So what they usually do is use a random number generator. It's a, it's a program that's just kicking out ones and zeros. Mm -hmm thousands of times a second. And of course, it's like flipping a coin. 
So if you flip a coin enough times, you're gonna get 50% heads, 50% tails, because mm -hmm. it's random and there's two things. So what you do with these tests is you say, well, this is random, there's two things. See if you can make more heads. Oh, okay. Or see if you can make more tails sure. by focusing on it. And the data there, this has been studied for decades. Uh, in fact, Princeton had a lab in their engineering department that did this for 12 years or so. And the evidence is pretty clear huh. that people can influence the outcome. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So after you've studied all of these different, yeah, types of brain activity, do you think that everyone might have a little bit of a psychic ability in them somewhere that we just don't know about? Yeah, I mean, my, and it's funny because pretty much every psychic medium I've ever talked to has said that that's the case, mm -hmm. that everybody has these abilities. And I, I, at this point, I think I kind of agree with that idea that it's kind of a natural ability, but it's like a skill. Right. And so different people have different natural abilities. So it's kind of like musical instruments. Somebody might be three years old and sit down and can play the piano. Uh, most of us can't do that. Right. Most of us have to practice yeah. and study and, and so I feel like it's a bit like that, that we all have the ability. Some of us have more natural ability than others. Sure. What about just from a scientific perspective, what do you think about people communicating with people who have passed on? Is that possible? <laughs> Again, it's an interesting one, right? Because yeah. it's a little bit hard to kind of wrap your brain around that it's like, is that really happening? All I can say is that I've seen enough with the, what they will call evidential mediumship. Right. So that's producing concrete information that is sort of irrefutably connected to a specific deceased person. Yeah. And so when that happens, it is kind of mind boggling when you see it in real life, yeah. because it's kind of like, how did they, where did they come up with that? Now, does that mean they're actually talking to the dead person or maybe they're picking it up psychically? Sure. Uh, who knows? But one way or another, they're getting information they shouldn't have access right. to. Right. Well, and then as you continue your research and more people who have these abilities hear about you, are they coming to you and saying, oh my gosh, hook me up. I want to see what's happening <laughs> in my brain. That's so cool. It is actually happening. Yeah. I, mean, I You know, probably once a week or so, I get an email or a phone call from somebody who, you know, is interested in, in you know, being part of some research or, you know, having me look at their specific thing that they yeah. do. Endlessly fascinating. Hey, yeah. thank you so much for visiting with us again. Thanks for Great having me. Great to see you. Dr. Terrence's book again is Becoming Psychic. We'll have more information on our website at katu.com.